Hey trail riders, hope you're doing well. The scriptures that get us through the Bible in the year are Nehemiah 13, 11 through Esther 1, 22. Psalm 102, 12 through 17, Proverbs 20, 24 and 25, Romans 13, 1 through 4, <coughs> 14, 12. How many of you remember the Weebles? The commercial said in the advertisement that the weebles wobble, but they never fall down. Today we're going to be talking about wobbly Christians. And our focal passage is going to come from Romans 13, verse 12, which says, So let us discard the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. The armor of God is not will not do us any good unless it's worn in its entirety. We must put on the whole armor of God, not just a few pieces that we think we are most suitable for. This again is something of crucial importance. If we are instead soldiers of the Lord's army, uh, if we are to avoid becoming what John Stott calls wobbly Christians who have no firm foothold in Christ, then we must put on the entire, entire equipment of which God provides us with. We cannot, we dare not, select parts of the armor and say, I do not really need the helmet of salvation. I don't, I, I don't mind wearing the breastplate of righteousness. You can do that, but of course, but if you do, then you must know exactly what will happen to you. You will be overcome by the enemy. The moment you say, I need, the breast, I, I need the breastplate, but I don't need the helmet, you're defeated. You need it all, the whole armor of God. You see, our understanding of what is involved in the spiritual defense against Satan is extremely inadequate. We, don't, we just don't have sufficient knowledge of what is involved. It is God alone who knows our enemy. And it is God alone who knows exactly how to protect us so that we can remain firm and steadfast when the enemy and his forces hurl themselves against us. So learn the, this lesson now before going any further. Every single piece of the God's armor is essential. And to select some and leave out the others is to take the route of, of failure and defeat. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that you would deliver from us from the attitude of pride that seeks to put our ideas ahead of yours. You know more about what we need to protect us from the enemy than we do. Help us ever to trust your judgment. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, for further study on this, look at 2 Corinthians 6, 1-10, Philippians 1, 27, and 1 Peter 5, 9, and keep these two questions in mind. What was a necessary requirement for Paul's ministry? And two, what are we called to do? God bless you guys. I hope you'll continue to follow me here on the Daily Ride, and I'll see you on the next trail ride.